Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday. Let me tell you something. I love the fact that we're not just here to celebrate a religious holiday. Now, may, many people are celebrating Easter in different ways. But the church of Jesus Christ, but the body of Christ, we're celebrating the fact that there was an enemy who literally looked at every single person on this earth and he said, you're defeated. But then God so loved the world that he sent his only son, Jesus. And Jesus said, you know what? On Friday, I'm going to allow the enemy, mind you, I'm going to allow the enemy. The enemy didn't take the life of Christ. Christ gave his life for us. He's on the cross now. It's Friday. The enemy's laughing. The enemy's saying you're defeated. The enemy's saying you're not coming out of this. Then came Saturday. Saturday, he is now buried in a grave. And I don't know what you came in with today, but I know that there's times in our lives where we can feel like we're buried with depression, buried with anxiety, buried with fear, buried with doubts, unbelief, buried with family problems, buried with marital issues. But how many know that on the third day, Jesus Christ rose again? Amen? Amen. That is awesome right there. You know what that tells me, honestly? I believe that God allowed... This to all flow this way for the purpose of God saying this. What I start, I finish. What I start, I finish. And the good work that God has begun in every single one of you, you need to be reminded today that God's going to finish that work. Because there is no hell, there is no grave, there is no death that can hold back Almighty God. And not just that, there is no forces of darkness, there's nothing that can hold back when God wants to do something incredible in our life. And he showed that to us through his son, Jesus, and this is why we're all sitting here today. And so I don't know what story you have, but I want to encourage you today. I'm here to stir your heart up. Now, I'm not the typical, you know, holiday preacher. I'm not. I'm, I know we'll, we'll talk about the resurrection, but that's not really where I'm going. I want to talk to you about your comeback. Because every single one of you right now is facing an issue. And everyone's issue looks different, but every single one of us have an issue right now. There's an issue of the heart. There's an issue in your family. There's an issue financially. There may be an issue in your health. There may be an issue with your children. There may be an issue with the workplace. There may be an issue with depression, anxiety. But every single one of you, I promise you, we're all facing something. But God is bigger than any issue that you're facing right now. As a matter of fact, we have a God who definitely loves to relate to his people in 2019. And let me re read you this first verse. Hebrews 2, verse 14 through 15 says this. He says, since, since all his children, how many children? All. I like to work with my congregation. Y'all ready to work? How many children? All. He says, since all his children have flesh and blood. So Jesus became human to fully identify with us. Let me just tell you something right now. The person that says this, and maybe it's you, maybe it's not, that says, nobody understands me. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Well, maybe no one around your sphere of influence, but let me tell you who does know. Jesus. Because Jesus knows how to identify in whatever season you're in right now. He identifies with your pain. He identifies with your hurt. He identifies with your brokenness. Jesus came in the form of man, human nature, all for the purpose of being able to relate and identify with whatever issue you're facing right now. God understands you, and you need to get that message today. But he says this. He says he did this, and I love that God, everything God does is with purpose. He said he did this so that he could experience death. And annihilate the effects of the intimidating accuser. And I know that we've all been accused. We've all been accused by someone in the past, I'm sure. Whether you were guilty or innocent. But everybody here has been accused at some point. Someone has talked about you. Someone has slandered you at some point in this life. 
But I want you to think about this. I know that we can get so caught up on humans. We can get so caught up on flesh and blood. But I want to remind you today that you and I, we have an adversary, an enemy, and his name is Satan. Yes, I said it, Satan. You don't hear that in church anymore. Nobody wants to talk about the reality that there's a devil, there's an enemy who hates you, who comes to steal, kill, destroy. There's an enemy who wants to destroy your family. There's an enemy that wants to destroy your children. There's an enemy that wants to destroy your life. And we have to realize that this enemy is real. But Jesus defeated this enemy. He crushed every single sin. He nailed sin once and for the whole earth. And we have to realize that right now, instead of focusing on maybe people that have hurt you, instead of focusing on maybe situations or, or past, you know, uh, issues and hurts with family or, or fathers or mothers or brothers and sisters, today, I pray that your eyes would be open and that you would realize that Satan wants to destroy you and he'll use people to do that. But people aren't your enemy. Satan's your enemy. And we can't be fooled by this. We got too many people fighting people. And it's just not going to work out. But he says this. So he says, I, 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 I experienced this death. And I know that there's people right now that may be sitting in this church or any church around the world that they feel like they're literally dying spiritually. Or they're dying physically. They feel like they're dying emotionally. And Jesus says, I experienced this death so that I could annihilate. So that I can destroy it. So that I could go ahead and take the sting out of your heart and bring you new life. And he says, and that is the devil who holds against us the power of death. By embracing death, Jesus sets free those who live their entire lives in bondage to the tormenting dread of death. I'm here to tell you today that resurrection pulsates with hope this day. Maybe you've been feeling like your spiritual heart has been somewhat dying. Maybe your marriage is just about to flatline. Maybe your children are flatlining. Maybe your physical body is flatlining. Maybe, maybe your emotional stability right now is flatlining. Maybe your walk with Christ has become so weak. Maybe you're so exhausted. You're so tired. You barely made it to church today. But today, God's resurrection is pulsing today. God wants to bring a new life. God wants to bring a rebirth to every single person who is open and willing to receive that. Can we give the Lord a hand clap for that? <laughs> after the horror of the cross on Friday, after the agony of knowing that God's son was dead on Saturday, I love this. The beginning of his comeback story exploded all throughout Israel. Man, when that tomb was empty, everybody was flipping out like, what in the world is going to happen now? I'll tell you what happened now. Man, God literally gave us a story that still prevails, that still speaks in history that there was an empty tomb. And just like we sang in the song, we weren't trying to be cute with this song, guys. The Bible, listen, the Bible already tells us everything we just sung. Those words, those lyrics that we were singing today, that if Jesus walked out of the tomb, I will too. If Jesus walked out of the tomb, I will too. Say that with me. If Jesus walked out of the tomb, I will too. Too many of us are still sitting on that bed in that tomb. Jesus like, I already left. You know, many of us think that Jesus bought that plot. No, he borrowed it. Some of you have been borrowing so much pain from other people. you got to stop borrowing stuff and realize that that's not mine. I have a new life in Christ Jesus. And God is trying to bring us this resurrection life today. The redemption of Jesus is about comebacks. The redemption of Jesus is about turnarounds. The redemption of Jesus is about new directions. The redemption of Jesus is about a fresh start. And I don't know, maybe right now you feel like, man, you have messed things up in your life. But today, you can get a fresh start. Today, you can have a new beginning. And Easter, I love this, and Easter is God's divine message to us. And he's saying, I still 
want to reach out to you. Easter is the message saying, I still love you. I don't care where you've been. I don't care where you are. God's saying today through his son, I care about where we're going. That's what Easter is. And Calvary, Calvary, <laughs> let me tell you something. Calvary wasn't meant for us. That message wasn't for us. Calvary was a message to Satan. It wasn't for you and I. It was a message to, to Satan saying, death, hell, and the grave can have you. That was the message of Calvary. Don't get it twisted. You have to realize that that message, God was not only talking to the church. God was also having a conversation with the enemy. He told them, you can't have my son and you can't have all my kids on this earth. You can't have them. But that's a choice. We have to accept that truth or not. Death was just an incident, not a final state. Listen, your circumstance right now, your challenge, your struggle, okay, it's just an incident. Why? Because it's not your grand finale. Every single one of you can get a comeback from God. God is, listen, God is a professional at comebacks. God, he's in the business of come back. He's in the business of redemption. He's in the business of restoration. He's in the business of rebirthing, rebuilding, renewing. That's the business that our God is in. And I'm here to tell you today that we can all have this. Because I know, listen, I know the church. The church in this world right now, the church is really quiet. It's silent. It's just so well put together. It's just so proper. Amen. When, when, listen, when, when, God, when God comes in, he says, I break forth light through darkness. God is saying to you and I, there is no darkness that is going to hold you back anymore. And I really believe there are people here today that need to realize that in those three days that Jesus was in the tomb, he wasn't taking a nap. Those three days in the tomb, literally Jesus was fighting on our behalf. Jesus was putting a whoop down on the enemy. He was taking the keys away from the devil in order to get us set free from the prison of sin, the prison of darkness. He wasn't just laying down waiting for his father to come get him. No, he was fighting and battling for you and I. That's why we celebrate Easter. But listen, but it doesn't just have to be on Easter Sunday. Let me just tell you something, and it's a funny story, I'm not trying to label you, but let's just keep it real, okay? Listen, all over America, you'll hear every pastor say this, man, on Easter, you get lines to come, people come to church in lines. On Friday, Good Friday, we had lines wrapped around this building. Two services, couldn't fit everybody. We call those people Christers. Yeah, that means that those are the Christians that come on Easter and Christmas only. Where are you the rest of the year? Why am I telling you this? I'm not telling you this to shame you. I'm telling you this because it's time to come back to Jesus for every single one of us. Not once a year. We're not doing a family reunion. Man, we are living resurrection life on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And let's come back on Sunday again and do it again. Amen? <laughs> Revelations 2.8 says this, these things says the first and the last. Who's the first and the last? Jesus. He says, who was dead and came back to life. Who was dead and came back to life. The wonderful good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that there can be a comeback story for every single one of us. That is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not only can we rebuild our lives, but we can actually be reborn today. And I believe that right now at this service, God is about to bring some reborn in the lives of people. At the last service, all kinds of people were reborn. And I believe that God's going to do the same thing here. But, but, when you think about this, you also have to think about this. You may be struggling with your own comeback right now. 
your own comeback story. You're like, man, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear that crazy Mexican preacher. I, 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 you know, yes, I, I got some struggles. I got some stuff. Or maybe it's not you. Maybe you're like, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, I'm good. I'm glad he's talking to my wife right now. I'm glad he's talking to my husband. Ah, the woman, listen to him. You know, you probably have your kids sitting next to you. You, you see he's talking to you. Let me tell you something. Whether it's you or someone you love, God has a comeback story for everybody. God, you know what? God has a comeback story for your enemies right now. Right now. The person at work that hates your guts, God has a comeback story for them. Do you realize that you have that resurrection power in you to help someone have a comeback as well? You have the comeback story for your children coming back to Jesus. You have the comeback story for your spouse coming back to God. You have the comeback story for your family to be restored. We all have this comeback story that God wants to give us. And I get it. Sometimes, you know, we, we have a, a struggle of a comeback of alcoholism, you know, addictions, drugs. Sometimes there's a, a comeback struggle because there's a depression that has been holding you down, that's been bearing you, anxiety. You know what's pretty sad is more and more in the church, you have good Christians. And I'm not hating on Christians, but I'm just saying that there's, there's, there's believers that are literally losing sight of the power and the message of the cross of Jesus Christ. We no longer believe in the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus that washes, that cleanses, that renews. And maybe you are, are in the struggle of the comeback of disaster or, or betrayal or brokenness or, or bankruptcy. Or, or maybe you have the struggle of comeback because you're a divorcee and you feel like you're not good enough. You feel like you're, 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 you have no future. You, there's, no, there's, no, there's no reset. There's no comeback because I failed in my life and, and I'm, I, I, I made some mistakes and, and I, did, I, I committed some sins that literally have brought me to this place. But how many know that no matter how far you are, God's hand, God's arm is not short that he can't reach you. He loves you. God is all about com comebacks. I mean, just read your Bible. Look at Samson. Ooh, that boy. Man had a big call of God. God put something amazing on him. And repeatedly he kept disobeying God. Repeatedly he kept denying God. Repeatedly he kept playing with sin. He kept playing with Delilah over and over and over again until what happened? He lost everything. But how many know that there came a place in his life, there came a moment, he had this experience where all of a sudden he started thinking, I need to get my life right. And what happens at the end of his life, he has a great triumph, victory, and he comes back and he finishes his call. How about the prodigal son that Jesus talked about? Jesus talked about a prodigal son who returns home in his disgrace. I mean, think about it. This kid, man, he was sleeping around with prostitutes. Man, he was drinking it up. He spent all of his father's inheritance and the father every single day was waiting for him while the prodigal son was thinking, I'm a disgrace, I'm a shameful, I'm a no good, I'm a low life. The father was waiting with open arms. Jesus was trying to say, I don't care what you've done, I just want you to come back. And he comes back, and the father's not even questioning him. He's not asking him, what would you do with my money? Where have you been? How many girls did you sleep with? Who were you drinking with? He just said, son, welcome home. That's what God does. Welcome home. How about, yeah, I can keep going. How about Moses? He had a comeback. How about Joseph? Joseph had a promise from God. His brothers sell him. He's a slave now. Then he's in prison because they're accusing him, accusing him, accusing him of being a rapist. Then he's forgotten in prison for 14 more years. But he had a great comeback. And the greatest comeback that we see in the Bible, the greatest comeback that God has given us in history, the greatest comeback that has a history story of past, present, and future is Jesus Christ when he came back from the dead. That's the greatest story comeback that we can ever experience. So Jesus himself, he performed the greatest comeback, man, by, by raising himself up. He said, I got to show my kids that you can come back. God wants to help you. He gives hope to the hopeless. He gives direction to the directionless. He helps those who need help. Uh, God plans, God's plan will always prevail, even when you jack those plans up. Aren't you glad? 
He already knows what the solutions are. Too many of us, we're looking for answers in all the wrong places. You're trying to find solutions here and solutions there, and we're buying the next best book to help me, the five steps to get better, the five steps to be a better husband, five steps to be a better wife, five steps to be a better parent. Let me tell you something. Jesus is the answer. Come back to Jesus. Jesus will tell you how to be a father, a mother, a son, a daughter. Jesus will teach you how to be a follower and not be compelled by the sins of the past, but be compelled by his love to obey him. That's what God is doing. Look at your neighbor and say, come back. No, no, look at them say, for real, you need to come back. And then, and then listen, the people that are in the front look back and say, come back. Yeah, they look back and say, come back. Now the people in the, in the back, look at the people in the front and say, you come back. <laughs> listen, no matter what disappointment, please listen to me. No matter what disappointment, no matter what grief, no matter what pain, no matter what trouble, no matter what heartache, no matter what encounter that you've experienced that has caused you, your family, your, your friend. What, I don't, listen, it's not like that God doesn't care, but God's saying, it doesn't move me. Think about it. God's, God's saying to us, your issues don't move me. I move the stone of issues. I'm trying. God, always, God is always offering us today. Listen, he offers us new beginnings. He offers us a change of heart. He offers us a powerful spiritual turnaround for every single one of us. And I, I know that many of us, we are spiritually dying. Like this whole thing can be very religious to you. Like I did the Easter thing. Yay, I feel better about myself. Enough with that. That needs to stop. God wants you to have a spiritual turnaround where all of a sudden you become lit for God. You're excited. You're passionate about Jesus. God offers the way forward, and his pathways are always good, aren't they? Mom, you've tried your pathway. How's that working for you? God has a better pathway. Say, get up. Get up. Come back. Get up. Say it with some attitude now. Ready? Get up. Get up. Come back. So here's the story of redemption. I love this story. I've preached this verse a bazillion times, and you always get something fresh. John 5, 1, 17. Ready? It says, sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He's giving us, Jesus is giving us a redemption story. Listen. So he comes to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish feasts, and in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate, everybody say the Sheep Gate. If you've never been to Israel, it's pretty cool. I've been there, and I, I'll tell you, I, I just, I don't read the Bible the same anymore. The, 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 the sheep gate that goes into the, the place called Bethesda, which is where the five porches of pools are at, it's interesting because the entrance of, of, of Bethesda is literally, a, they call it the sheep gate because that's where the shepherds would walk in with their sheep. And he would walk them in there, and that's where they would wash the sheep. And so the pools that we're thinking about, I was thinking like jacuzzis, you know? Like everybody just, like that's what I used to think before I went to Israel. Then when I saw the pools of Bethesda, oh my God, they're deep. They're huge. And what happened was that the water, the spring water, would literally fill those pools. And, and the Bible says that, that when the angel of the Lord would come, that the little, the, the, literally the wings of the angel would touch the waters. And whoever would jump in first would be supernaturally, miraculously healed. Pretty amazing, huh? And so in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate is a pool. Why do I say that to you? Because I want you to know that Jesus walked through that door. Why am I telling you this? Because Jesus is the door to your salvation. Why am I saying that? Because Jesus is the door to your healing. Let's keep going. And in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate is a pool in the Aramaic language. It is called Bethesda. And that Greek word for Bethesda literally means healing pools. It means pool of outpouring, okay? And it's surrounded by five rows of columns with a roof over them. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie down. Let me say lie down. And among them were those who were blind, those who could not walk, and those who could hardly move. So there's a lot of, lot of dysfunction, a lot of, lot of broken people in this place. Like this was the hot spot now for sick people. This was the hot spot for broken people. 
And he says, and one person was there. Jesus has the attention on this one dude who had not been able to walk for 38 years. One thing I have learned as I read scripture, one thing I have learned just even just doing life is that I have noticed that if you identify with your issue, you literally forget your identity. If you, if you start just identifying with your issue, not only can you, can you forget who you are, but you'll forget who he is. And all these people, just to get a big, big panoramic image, all these people had issues. And their issues became their identities so much that they started labeling, okay, uh, all, the, all the non-walkers are over here, all the blind people over here, all the lame people, any lame people here today? Okay, over here. And they would literally put you in areas, in groups. And isn't it amazing that misery loves company? It's amazing how, how, how people love to congregate around other negative people. It's like they find each other, huh? Like magnets. I don't get that. And, and you may be saying today, like, well, thank God he's not talking about me. Let me tell you something. Most of you right now, you think you don't have an issue. But you do. Don't hate. Okay, why? Why, why Pastor, why would you say that? Because we love to redefine our issues. So let's say you know you got an issue or something. You don't want to call it what it is, so you give it another name. But we really have issues. And so all throughout the Bible, you see different people that had issues. How about the woman with the issue of blood? Does that girl have an issue? We don't know her name. We just know her as the woman with the issue of blood, right? So she had an issue. She finally realized, man, my issue needs a touch. How about the guy who was in the cave, he had an issue. He was demonized. Remember when he's in the cave and he would come out and they had to chain him, you know, hands and feet because he would come out and be like, ah. He had an issue. Jesus shows up, changes his issue. How about the girl at the well? Remember her? Jesus says, hey, girl, give me a cup of water. She's like, Psh, I ain't no water. What do, what, do, what do Israelites have to do with us, you know? And you know what the issue was there? The girl had all kinds of issues, you know. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, hey, girl, you know, if you only knew who's talking to you, and, and, and they start going this conversation, and she's acting like she has no issue. He's like, hey, why don't you bring your husband? Let's talk about uh, your life. She's like, oh, I don't got, I'm not married. He's like, I know, you got five, girl. <laughs> and she's like, oh, how'd you know? See, a lot of us will redefine our issues. Let's keep going. So Jesus saw him lying there. And he knew that the man had been in that condition. Say condition. He'd been in that condition for a long time. And I know that maybe some of us right now, we've been in a condition that we have redefined for a long time. So he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the disabled man replied, I have no one to help me into the pool. When an angel stirs up the water, I try to get in. But someone else, everybody say someone else. And we are so good at blaming someone else, aren't we? Like we... We rather stay the same while blaming someone else. If it ain't blaming the government, it's blaming the president. If it ain't blaming the president, it's blaming your auntie. If it ain't blaming your auntie, it's you're blaming your mom. If it ain't blaming your mom, it's blaming your dad. If it ain't your dad, it's your sister, your brother. If it ain't them, it's your coworkers. If it ain't them, it's your boss. But we're all looking for someone to blame. This guy's like, hey, man, someone's always trying to get in the way of my, my breakthrough. He says, I try to get in, but someone else always goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up. Get up, pick up your mat and walk. And the man was healed right away. He said, get up. And the man got up. See, here's the problem. I think most of us, we think that we serve a God who gives handouts. God is not a God of handout. God is a God of hand up. Sometimes you're thinking, why am I not seeing my breakthrough? Maybe it's not that God hasn't heard your prayer. Maybe it's not that God has overlooked you. I'm telling you that sometimes faith looks like this. Get up. 
get up. Rise up. And that right there is the beginning of the process of your victory. And it says, and immediately the man got up. And I, I promise you, when Jesus said, get up, I'm sure he was just like, come on, get up, boy. What's wrong with you? I'm sure he did this. Get up. And he helped and helped him up. Huh? Uh, so, so, so listen, God doesn't want to give handouts. God wants to give hand up. I want to get you up today. Too many of us are just waiting like, okay, get, you know, just carry Carry. You know, we've seen that picture of Jesus holding the guy, and all you see is Jesus' feet, right? The guy's being carried. Man, I like the other picture better where you, all you see is the butt mark on the sand. Jesus like, man, but you walk. Some of us just want God to carry us the rest of our life. He said, I gave you feet. Walk. Follow. Do something. Get up. Say with me, levántate. Her my girl, people are like, oh, why, wow. He spoke Spanish, whoa. The man was healed right away. Listen, he picked up his mat and he walked. This happened on a Sabbath day. It happened on Saturday. This happened yesterday. It was Saturday. And all the religious spirits, let me tell you something. All the, when God does something supernatural, you don't have to be a Christian to be religious. You can be someone that's just the biggest doubter and your religion is doubt. Huh? Have you ever seen a miracle and you tell someone, yeah, God healed that person. Oh, no, I'm sure it was the doctors probably gave them the right medicine and they just turned things around. No! That's religion. No, when will you come to faith? When will you come to trust? When will you say that was God? When will you stop taking the glory? When will you stop touching the glory and say, you know what? Honestly, uh, I, I am better, but it was Jesus. I'm better because of Jesus. And look, he says, so the Jewish leader said to him, the man who had been healed, it is a Sabbath day. The law does not allow you to carry your mat. Why are you carrying your mat? Why are you? Get back on your mat. And isn't that just like the enemy? He always wants to get you back. He always wants you to go back. He always wants you to default back to your old life. Like so many of us here, notice that your issues are never new. It's always the same issue. It's always a repeated issue. <laughs> it's Saturday, man. You're breaking the law. But he replied, hey, listen, the one who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. And they asked him, who's this fellow? Who told you to pick it up? Who told you you were going to be right? Who told you that you were going to get, who told you this? And I think sometimes you can sit in a service like this and you're hearing words of hope. You're hearing words of affirmation. You're hearing words of picking you up and someone may come back and say, you ain't changing. Come on. You went to that church. Man, we already know what you do. We know where you've been. Come on, your uncle drink a lot. What are you talking about? Your sister tell it all. People are so good at talking about your past. Why? Because the enemy will use those words to redefine you in a very dark light. And will put you back on the place where God wants to deliver you from or where he has delivered you from. And the one who was healed had no idea who, who did it, who it was. And Jesus had slipped away into the crowd uh, that was there. And later Jesus found him. At Elevate Church. And Jesus said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning. Everybody say it. Stop. Sinning. Stop. Sinning. What got him there? What got him there? What got him there? Poor choices. A bad decision. Rebellion. Or something worse may happen to you. And the man went away and he told the Jewish leaders it was Jesus who had made him well. And Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath day. So the Jewish leaders began to oppose him. And Jesus defended himself and he said to them, listen, my father is always doing his work. He is working right up to this day. I am working too. Man, he's saying, listen, my God is in the business of getting people up. 
My God is in the business of redeeming people back to life. My Father is in the business of welcoming home every sinner that has been far away from God. That's the business that, is God, that, God, that God's into. And, and listen, if you have never been to Jerusalem, I'm telling you, it's, it's a very interesting thing because it, hold on, I just lost my notes here. One second. Because when, when, when you see, when you see this, 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 this play called, called Bethesda, it's, it's like all spread out. But what, what used to just be a place where sheep would come to be washed turned into a place where all the sick, all the broke. I mean, we're talking multitudes of people would literally sit in this place. And, and, I mean, and just, just think, okay. So here you have the guy, Jesus sees him, 38 years. He's lying on his bed. And you know what? These people got so comfortable because this place was never meant for sick people. And like so many of us, you know what? Sometimes you lay in your mat so long, you just like it now. You become comfortable. You're just kind of like, hey, all of a sudden, man, you have like this texting your friends or they're like, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> hey, well, what's going on the other side? Seen any angels today? No, not today, man. All right. Hey, would you tell uh, Lupita to bring the taco truck this way, please? <laughs> yeah, man, all right, all right, cool. And what happens is when, you have, when you've been dealing with an issue for so long, you, be, you become so well acquainted with it that you learn to live with it. And it's amazing because the angel would only come once a year. And many of them saw. They saw that the angel came. And they saw people get healed. But that's all they can do is they could only see what others were getting. And here you have this man who Jesus is having a conversation with. And I'm sure this guy's thinking as he's laying in that bed, like many of us, I'm wondering if you're hearing me today, you're thinking, I wonder if I'm the right person that he's talking about. I wonder if I'm that person that I can get my comeback. I wonder if this is the right day for me. Because these people that were there, they were all wondering, is this the right day? Is this the right time? Is this the right hour? And some of you are wondering, could that be me today? Maybe this is the will of God for me to just live here. Maybe this is the, the plan of God for me just to stay here. Maybe, maybe this is my lot in life. Maybe this is what I was born to be. Let me tell you something. No, it's not. God has a comeback for you. God has a turnaround for you. God has a reset for you. God has a rebirth for you. God has a newness, a life for every single one of you. And so many people in Bethesda could see it, but they couldn't have it. Like so many come to church, they can see it, but they feel they can't have it. I'm telling you that God cares too much. God loves you too much to leave you on that mat. He loves you too much to allow yourself to just sit there and lay there day after day, year after year. Now, maybe you do have a legit pain, a heartbroken. Maybe you got stuff that you have experienced. But you know what happened with all these people? Man, they started congregating together and talking about all the stuff that happened to them. Let me tell you something. We are compassionate about your past. Fine, you were hurt. You were broken. You were betrayed. You were backstabbed. You were abused. You were accused. Okay, that's that's the reality. That happened. But how many years will you keep living that way? 38 years this guy's still talking the same excuse. How many years will you keep going back and blaming your father, your mother, your sister, your brother? How many more years will you blame that abuse? Think about it. It's not that God doesn't care. He loved that man too much to let him stay there. He said, do you want to be made well? That's all I want to know. Do you want to be made well? Because if you do, I'll lift you up. I'll pick you up. If you want to be made well, I'll rise you up. If you want to be made well, I'll remove the stone. That's what God wants today. But we got to come back to truth. I get it. Listen, I can tell you a sobbing story of my life. I'm not doing that. But one of them was I hated my dad. He burned his, his girlfriend that he was having an affair with, burned my home down with, with us in it. My, my, my aunt had a 
break the window and rescue me out of my room as it was engulfed in flames. So for 21 years, I walked with rage and anger and hate and bitterness and resentment. 21 years until Jesus showed up and he said, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? So I'm not trying to downplay your pain. We have all been pained in some way. God cares about your healing. God cares more about get up, rise up. That's why we celebrate Easter. Can you give the Lord a big hand clap? He loves you too much to leave you on the mat. Too much. Huh? Too much. Stop identifying with the labels of, of you're poor, you failed, you divorcee, you, 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 you sick person, you, you crazy person, you druggy, you alcoholic. Stop that today. And the Lord is just asking you, do you want to be made well? That's all he wants to know. That's it. It's that simple. That's all. Nothing else. So, Pastor, what do I do? How do I get back up? What, what, well, number one, I want you to know that Jesus wants you to live beyond your past. Too many of us are living in our past still. Jesus says, I want you to start living beyond your past. I am your future with hope. You got to know that. Yes, my past happened. Yes, I've been hurt. Yes, all those but Jesus says, but I will redeem it. I'll redeem it. He wants to give you a comeback. How do I do that? Let me give you quick points. Do you want to get well? How do I get well? Well, you're going to have to, number one, make Jesus greater than what anyone did to you. Make Jesus greater than what anyone did to you. Say it with me. Make Jesus greater. No, no, y'all, church, come on, don't get quiet on me. Make Jesus greater, make Jesus greater. than what anyone did to me. He has to be greater. Number two, you have to make what Jesus did for you bigger than what they said about you. Say it with me. Ready? One, two, three, go. You have to make what Jesus did for you bigger than what they said about you. Because I'm sure many have spoken ill of you. Many said you'll never come out. Many have probably said you're not worth it. You're no good. You suck. You're worthless. But let me tell you something. He's bigger than all that. Number three. You're going to have to make Calvary bigger than your history. You're going to have to make Calvary bigger than your history. I started with this, that Calvary was a message to Satan that you can't have me. So Calvary has to be bigger than all your history. All of it. All of it. But that's a choice, isn't it? Because you got to get up. And it's not easy getting up. It's not, it's not easy. But you can get up. Stand to your feet. Let's go. Stand to your feet. Jesus is giving you a comeback right now. Jesus is wanting to heal your heart. Jesus doesn't just get you up. Jesus wants to heal you. Listen, look what Jesus does. The guy comes back, and the first thing he does is he goes to Elevate Church. It's the first thing. The guy never, he never missed another church service. Look, verse 14 of that same chapter, he said, Later Jesus found him at Elevate Church at the temple. And Jesus said to him, see, you are well again. You see, I told you you could be healed. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. I really believe that, that God is not only wanting to love us and give us a comeback, but he's also with all of his love and compassion, he's saying, you got to stop sinning. You got to stop rebelling. You got to stop disobeying me you have to stop that if not the enemy not God God does not punish people Satan punishes people so God's saying I'm trying to keep you from something worse happening to you Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through me he said I am the door that's why he talked, he specifically said that he walked through the door in Bethesda, the sheep gate door. Why? Jesus says, I am the door. I am the answer. And I love this. Last verse. Verse 17, my father is always doing his work. Right now, as you've been sitting here, God has been doing a work in your heart. 
right now. And then Jesus says, and he is working right up to this day, and I am working too. Jesus is working on your behalf right now, but I don't feel it. He's working for me, but I just don't sense it. He's working for me, but, but I don't see it, but he is working behind the scenes. Jesus is not giving you a handout today. Jesus is giving you a hand up, hand up. Every hand up right now in this church right now, hand up, hand up, and just allow God to love you. Hand up. Let me tell you why you have to raise your hand. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Look at me. Put your hand down for a second. Listen. If you get anything out of today, listen to this. Satan is threatened by your wholeness. Because God forbid that you actually believe him and you get up. You literally put a threat on the enemy because just think this if you were to get up get healed get rebirth get restored imagine the damage that you will cause in the kingdom of darkness imagine the things that you will do for God on this earth and the reason I say that is because what what are you gonna do are you gonna show up in heaven one day and and when you're standing before God you're gonna be like oh God uh, you know I'm sorry I was laying for 85 years in my bed I'm you know I, you know man everybody hurt me you know I'm so sorry God you know please I'm so, you know I was just trying to make a dollar God you know I'm just I'm just what do you think God's gonna say to us he said he's gonna say my son my son died for you my son gave everything to you my, my son was offering you healing my son was offering you redemption my son was offering you a new life. My son was willing and ready to do something great in you and through you. And that's what God is saying to you on Easter Sunday. It's time to rise up again. It's time to get up. It's time to rise up. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, we thank you. You see every hand up lifted. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would begin to lift up the hearts of your people, God. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that there would be a stirring within us, that there would be a motivation, an inspiration, that there would be a faith that's rising up because of what Jesus did on Calvary. Lord, I declare that you are the great physician, the healer of our mind, our soul, our spirit. Lord, I'm asking you today, in the name of Jesus, as you see our hands lifted high, we're saying, Father, we're rising up. Say it, we're rising up. We're rising up. In Jesus' name. Listen, every eye closed, every head bowed, hands down. If you're here today, and you've never invited the greatest love, if you're here today, and you've never said, Jesus, save me, if you're here today, and you've never said, Jesus, help me, save me, heal me, redeem me. The Bible says in Revelation 3.20 that he stands at the door of your heart and he knocks. Why does he knock? Jesus is never going to force himself in your life. God is not going to force anything on you. He lets you make your own personal decision. He lets you open the door of your heart. And when you open the door, he will walk in and he will begin to heal those broken places. He will begin to clean up the mess that we've created in our heart. But it starts with you opening the door of salvation. If you're here, I'm telling you, God loves you. I'm telling you, God loves you so much. He loves you too much to leave you on the mat today, please. He loves you too much. He cares about you. He cares about your future. He cares about your now. He cares about your pain. He cares about the abuse and the accu accusations of the enemy, but he, but he wants to heal you. He wants to give you new life. When I count to three, you're going to lift your hand up. Why? Because God doesn't give handouts. He gives hands up. And when I count to three, and if you're here, you shouldn't be embarrassed. If you're saying, Pastor, I want to receive this love. I want to receive this Lord, this Savior, Jesus. I want to receive what he did for me on Calvary. When I count to three, hands will go up high in the air. Why? Because you're getting a hand up today. Why? You're getting back up today. 
God has something new for you, something fresh for you. Are you ready? One, you're not ashamed anymore. Two, you're not going to live in guilt and condemnation. You're ready for a new life. Here we go. One, two, three. If that's you, lift it high in the air. Quickly, high, 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 high. I see all those hands. High. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Lift it high. You lift it high. And you say, I'm getting my hand up today, Lord. Yes. Yes. Come on, church. Give it up for these people. That takes courage. That takes faith. That takes trust. I want us all to pray this, especially all of you that lifted your hand, which are many of you. I want you to pray to say, Jesus, today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, that my comeback is today. I'll never forget what you have started at this hour, at this time, on this day. Today, there's a rebirthing. I'm born again, filled with your Holy Spirit, resurrection life. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on me. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen. That's awesome. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.